Thanks for staying with us. Now, a bill for an act to scrap the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, which was introduced in the House of Representatives, has elicited various reactions. Sponsor of the bill, Awaji Inebenka Biante, is seeking to repeal Section 31558A of the 1999 Constitution and the National Youth Service Corps Act. Many fresh graduates earnestly desire to wear the National Youth Service Corps NYSC uniform. It is usually an honor to wear the khaki, serve one's father learned then, and the corps members truly served with sincerity and honor. Well, that seems to be in the good old days in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and even early 2000s. Now, the usefulness of the NYSC scheme has been called to question. According to the synopsis of the bill introduced by member in the House of Representatives, Awaji Inebenka Biante, who pointed out that incessant killing of innocent core members in some parts of the country due to banditry, religious extremism, ethnic violence, incessant kidnapping of innocent core members across the country justify the intent of the bill. Today, what do we have? Even with the challenges of ASU strike and all of it, some students spend as much as eight to nine years before they graduate, no fault of theirs. And when they graduate, it is no longer automatic that you just walk in and go and serve. In some cases, people are kept on the queue for two to three years. You sum all of this up. By the time you are done with your studies, by the time you are done with the youth service, you are well over 25, 28 years. And most establishments, most establishments will have it as a policy that you don't employ persons beyond certain age limits. There, there are challenges with this scheme. There are challenges with this scheme. So whatever way, whichever way it goes, it's going to be a win-win for everybody. But my stand is, let us scrap it. A public analyst also gave his take on the bill. Is the answer scrapping it? or you look for a way to redefine the use of the scheme. Now, if areas are challenged with respect to you know, insecurity, then what do you do? Such areas, it does not mean insecurity will be there for, forever. So you can, you can, in the interim, alter the dynamics or the operational dynamics, I would say, of the scheme. Because a lot of youth coppers have gone to other parts of the country and never went back. They got married there, they stayed there. And those are the things that have helped us to integrate as a nation. I don't think that the, the, the scheme should be scrapped. There are many things not working with it. Don't go the lazy way out. Sit down, interrogate the process, and come up with a workable you know, solution to it. Here is also some mixed reactions by some Nigerians across the streets of Lagos. I'm about in mind like next month or so, so I don't see any reason why any Nigerian should not be given the chance to serve their country. Scrapping NYC still doesn't solve the problem of insecurity, right? Letting it continue still doesn't stop the problem. The fact that you go to NYC doesn't guarantee you that you're going to have a very good job. So this also affords those going for the NYC to choose a better handwork to do. You cannot afford to finish sending your child to this school with all the suffering and all these things. They will come there to tell you that uh, headsmen, whatever, Boko Haram, has come to eliminate their own children, not our own children anyway. NYSC scheme was set up in 1973 by the Yakubu Gowon administration as part of strategies to foster unity in the post-Civil War era. Meanwhile, the FG has disagreed with House of Representatives. Nigeria's Youth and Sports Minister Sonde Dari, who superheads the NYSC, said despite the security concerns raised as one as the major reasons to scrap the scheme, the scheme will remain. To health report now, did you know that art also has the power to communicate, educate, given a growing role of significance in health institutions. Well, some medical personnel, including the Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akina Bayomi, have gathered for a conference to speak on the importance of art in health.
Plus TV Africa correspondent Ngozi Kaoha JC has more on this. It is the first inaugural National Arts and Health Conference in Nigeria and a guardian of medical students, professionals, healthcare institutions and stakeholders to promote art in the well-being of Nigerians. This year's theme is the arts, health and you, which focuses on advocacy from the local to the national level through education on arts and medicine. Practices in hospitals, healthcare centers, and communities. Lagos State Commissioner for Health Professor Aki Abayomi speaks on the impact of art on patients and staff. The Lagos State Government is 100% behind artists. Um, we have a plan to totally transform the appearance of our buildings, both in terms of art display and in terms of design. I've just come from a new building that we're going to be commissioning on Saturday. And if you just walk through the building, every wall has beautiful art that is aimed at uplifting the spirits of both patients and staff that work there. Professor Abayomi also speaks on sickle cell disease and the effective way of treating it. We all think that every sickler or every SS patient is going to live a terrible life of pain and suffering and early death. But what we discovered in, in Jamaica was that actually, lots of people who are born with sickle cell never ever manifested with any of the symptoms of sickle cell. And we only knew they had sickle cell because we tested them at birth. The convener has and the vision of arts in the health and its impact on general well-being. Deputy Public Affairs Officer with the U.S. Consulate, Jennifer Falls, highlights the support that the U.S. has given to the growth of healthcare in Nigeria. Our vision is that in the next 10 years, about 1 million Nigerians would have benefited from the use of art, either in the hospital or in the community, for their mental health and personal well-being. The U.S. mission in Nigeria works very closely with our Nigerian partners to improve the health of the population. Because when people are healthy, they can live full lives, they can get education, they can get jobs, they can provide for their families, and that all contributes to the growth of Nigeria. The facilitator of the event encouraged government agencies, NGOs, art groups, healthcare professionals, and institutions, among others, to advocate and advance arts for the collective health of communities in Nigeria. For Plus TV Africa, Ngozika or HSE. Well, our report has it that in an atmosphere where the patient often feels out of control, the acts can serve as a therapeutic and healing tool, reducing stress and loneliness and providing opportunities for self-expression. And finally, as part of efforts to inform Lagos residents on the developmental strikes adopted by his government, Governor Babajide Samulu and his deputies say their main priorities are youth, security and employment. The governor said this at the celebration of his 731 days in office. Plus TV Africa correspondent Destiny Momo has more on this. The 731 days celebration of Governor Sonwolu's administration was celebrated in high spirit, attended by dignitaries of high repute. The event is a compendium of Sonwolu's administration project. The governor spoke on his developmental achievements, saying the Fort Mainland Bridge which will commence before the end of 2021, among other infrastructural projects. The construction and the execution are coming out from the ground. Our state will be like a massive construction site. And so I'll plead that for the next one year or so, just bear with us as we continue to change the face of your state. As a government, we have consistently matched our words with action. We have worked tirelessly to transform into reality our shared aspiration of making Lagos one of the most functional and habitable cities in the world. Deputy Governor Hamzat says this administration is people's friendly, productive and results oriented. My brother and friend, Governor Babajide Olushola Sonwoli. Lagosians and of course our employers, because in Lagos we pursue shared prosperity and shared responsibility. In the spirit of that, 
I want you to know that we have handled the mandate you bestowed on us with reverence, humility, and solemnity. Governor Songwolu says the security and employment of youth are his major priority. Everything that we're about stands on two cardinal things, security and employment for our youth. And these are two things that I want to live with all of us. It's only in a safe and secure environment that businesses can thrive, that people can go to their homes and sleep with their two eyes closed, that indeed Lagos can become a resilient and a city that is comparable to anyone in the world. The sixth focal point of this administration is traffic management and transportation, health and environment, education and technology, entertainment and tourism, security and governance, and making Lagos a 21st century economy. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. Now, while some social commentators love the idea of stewardship, the charge to the governor is to walk the talk throughout his tenure. Now, it's a wrap, but before we go, let's still remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and just subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Ubiuku. Thanks for watching.